Yay, Becky. <laughs> okay, hang tight. Let's just okay. continue chat. Sorry. Do you want to just do a quick recap? Yeah. Yeah. 11.30. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's 11.30 on Monday, June 6th, and I am calling the City of Rollingwood Park Commission meeting to order. Uh, we will do attendance at this time. My name's Chad Smith. Mary Elizabeth Coser. Jennifer Meyer. Don Hudson. Laurie Mills. Melissa Morrow. All right. First off, we will uh, tackle public comments. Citizens wishing to address the Park Commission for items not on the agenda will be received at this time. Please limit comments to three minutes. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, the Park Commission is restricted from discussing or taking action on items not listed on the agenda. Citizens who wish to address the Park Commission with regard to matters on the agenda will be received at the time the item is considered. We'll now accept public comments. It was just as good the second time around. Nice. Yeah. Still beautiful. Yeah. Still but good. faster. <laughs> yeah, it's faster. Just speedy. I like it. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know real quick, um, it is now budget season, so the City Council will be starting their budget process um, at this upcoming meeting. Um, basically, if there are any items you are interested in putting in the budget, things like that, um, those can all go through your City Council members. So um, we'll be working on the base budget um, for the next month or two, exceptional items, kind of the same process as usual, but um, just feel free to reach out to your Mayor and Council members if there are any items you're interested in having on the budget this year so just wanted to let you all know perfect thank you thanks Ashley <clears throat> anybody else for public comments all right uh, on to agenda item number two discussion and possible action on the minutes from the May 2nd 2022 Park Commission meeting <clears throat> motion to approve I second We've got it. a motion to approve and a second second Everybody in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Were you in favor? I, I got kicked out. I was in New Orleans. I got okay. kicked out right. five times. We don't so. need you. I know. <laughs> you don't need me. <laughs> All right. Regular agenda item number three update from Western Hills Little League and Western Hills Girls Softball. Got anything? I'll just, uh, yeah, season's over. Uh, other than Little League, right? You guys have a team or two practicing up there. So yep. um, softball does not. Uh, so we're pretty much kind of wrapped up. We might discuss having some clinics because we don't have any all-star teams to keep some of the older girls uh, playing softball over the summer. But we'll work with uh, Ashley and team to figure out what days might work or whatever because, you know, that's what we need to do as part of our lease or whatever. So, but that's it. Okay. Any questions, concerns? No, I think everything went off without a hitch. Nobody, you know, no major issues this year with softball or baseball. So thanks. And do yeah. we have a list of like what's, what y'all have spent this year or done this year in terms of in accordance with the lease? Yeah, we, yes. We'll put together our big, expenditure on all the fencing was finished so yeah we'll put together a summary sheet of those costs i'll get it to ashley so she can forward that out to you guys Perfect. thank you i think little league and softball were obligated to spend thirty thousand dollars and uh, and they did but we'll get it all in writing i think we got to be better about that going forward <laughs> about about just tracking back and having a paper trail of okay uh, yeah. All right. Um, discussion and possible action to review the monthly park walkthrough schedule. I think this was mine. Okay. From last time. Um, what I'm noticing in doing monthly walkthroughs is that because of the lack of labor that we do have available to us, a lot of those same things keep showing up. And my recommendation would be to move our walkthroughs to quarterly to give the city time to make actionable improvements. Any All right, open discussion? up for discussion. Anybody got any thoughts? I think that makes a lot of sense. I all mean, I, we can all walk through it anytime and send a note. Sure. But yeah. I think making the more formal one, I, and I, that way I really do it with a staff with, person. And I, with yes, you and and because quarterly we were doing them with the staff anyway, so if we can just do them with the staff, Vicki, I don't know if that's doable, but if, if we did it at a time that 
worked for y'all, I think it saves a lot of back and forth. Yeah, throwing out a calendar and write a phone okay. number and check. Yeah. It, is it, um, is your reasoning that um, things don't get done um, on a monthly meeting? Um, in a monthly, in the 30 day time frame between walkthroughs, I don't think much is able to get done. And so, you know, I don't go every month, but when I go, I'm still seeing some of the same stuff. So I just felt like maybe it was worth the discussion to move us to quarterly to give the city more time to make noticeable improvements. You know, I, um, my thoughts are, for me, it winds up being two or three times a year, which is not a lot. Um, and some of that's when I've gone, I've written up reports and photographs and yep. distributed them, and other times I haven't done anything. Um, I, I think there's value in having a monthly walkthrough, uh, regardless of whether we, a lot can happen in, in three months. Um, weeds can totally overgrow a, a nice planting but I think uh, if we do, if we leave it monthly, I think we should have a, can be informal, but I think there should be some sort of a, just a brief report sent to Ashley to be distributed. Well, I think we're all doing that. I know that when I do them, I do send the report and pictures, and I've met with Vicki separately to talk through with her what I've seen. So I think, I mean, I think that's the expectation. There's that mm -hmm. form. So I do think that's happening. Okay. But I understand what you're saying as well, because it does, you know, a lot can happen in that time. But to um, Melissa's point, you can always, if you see something, let them know in between the formal walkthroughs. That's true. But it's up for discussion. I mean, it's just that been a frustration of mine is I see the same things when I walk through. I have in the past always notified the city when there was something that needed to be done without waiting for the monthly park right. walkthroughs. So I don't see a problem with it. I think the formal walkthroughs are important, but I think as long as we are diligent with communicating with the city getting the information to them and then maybe ensuring that we follow up with them to see that things are getting done and and maybe even seeing what we need to do to ensure it gets done maybe there's something we can do to help but i think quarterly could work i think quarterly could work too as far as on a formal basis as long as we can still report informally more frequently and, and one thing that Vicki and I have discussed and I've shared some names with her is talking with vendors about how we can help with some of those routine maintenance things. I know we had Queenscapes before. They really didn't do what they were supposed to do. They were hard to keep track of or keep on task. And so we're looking at some other options of just the tree trimming and the mulching and doing things, the weeding, things that that you know Vicky's department isn't big enough to do on a regular basis as needed and so we're just trying to get numbers together and, and ideas of ways in which we can help them so that they're not bogged down by the regular maintenance when other things come up that need attention that aren't on the regular to do I always assumed that our budget could not afford that but if we can, I think we need to. Well, I think we're going to just look into it, see what it takes, and see what we need to do to get that done because it's just not physically possible. And I know, I mean, I was on the board of the commission when we decided to take that away from Queenscapes, and that made sense at the time. But it really is just too much for a department of two or three to, to do when they're taking care of water issues and um, things besides just the land. So... Right. Um, Good, thank anyway, you. Anyway, we're looking thank into you. it is all I'm saying, and we're gonna just see what it takes and see how we could possibly get some help in here. Good, thank you. Sure. I was going to bring that up as well because as, it, as budget season is here, if we can ask for the money to pay for additional maintenance of the park, then Vicki and crew will be able to work on the other things that crop up that aren't the routine maintenance that has to happen every week all the way around anyway. 
And I know Vicki in her spare time yeah. is talking to vendors because she knows what they do and where they need the help. Um, I just don't think we're there yet. I mean, we could put a placeholder. We could talk about putting something in that and just see if we get it and work with that until we can figure out what more we need to do. I don't know, Alec, if you have any thoughts about this. I'm still sort of learning curve, learning I know. Curve. <laughs> um, but maybe we can talk after and. Yeah, it would be something we would want to just get ready for the next season rolling okay. over. These crews are all pretty full right now. Even ABC was like, no, nah, we can't add another big client yeah. right now. So if we have a you know estimate ready to go for the next season, we'll push through the summer. That's okay. Well, and I'd like to see sort of what the role would be because the ABC for WEA sort of serves as our in-house uh, maintenance group. Right. But we still do, like when we do tree trimming or we have, you know, um, you know, like a falling down area that we need to kind of re-put um, back, um, we do special projects. And so, I mean, I think that's totally fits with, you know, having uh, in-house and then outsourcing it. My question would be is what's our role sort of in prioritizing those? And so what I love about doing it quarterly is then in a way we can all set aside a little bit of time those other two months to, to prioritize, hey, we got the list, we know where it is, they don't have time, they can do this project but they don't have enough time to do this project. And so we can help them sort of prioritize, this is the one that we wanna focus on this right. year. And then as far as budgeting goes, is actually really just then saying, hey, even if it's not for this year, this is what we'd like to see on the budget for next year. Um, we know we have a big you know, project coming up. No, I think that all works. So we kind of got off topic a little bit, but I think we can go back to our motion. Yeah, any other <laughs> discussion on the... Uh, uh, I, have, I have some thoughts. <coughs> Monthly thoughts. Walk-through schedule. Um, <coughs> in my yard, <laughs> if I don't look at something every day just about, I'm overrun with every vicious weed that knows where I live. And maybe what we should do is we should have a formal quarterly uh, with staff walkthrough with a, a pretty thorough report. And a, But I think we need to have, and I also enjoy them. I've gotten to know various of the um, fellow park commission members at those walkthroughs. And I think they play an important role, but I do see that having a, a quarterly, which is a very serious, you know, we're gonna identify some action items here, and uh, that would make sense to me. Um, I think quarterly, you know, we walked through Mary Elizabeth and um, Vicki and I several months ago, and the, the weeds trying to take over things are absolutely aggressive and out of hand. And it's, it's, it's no small thing to keep up with that and just to be aware of them. And I, I, as we looked at that, and I kind of looked at it through Vicki's eyes, it was like, holy cow, <laughs> this, is, this is a lot. Another thought I had, and I, I, I talked to Vicki about this briefly before the meeting, is that uh, I would be happy to volunteer to walk walk the park grounds with Vicki and have her say, we need this done on this schedule this time of year and move on and make it into a basically a set of work instructions for maintaining our park. And um, Vicki's game to walk through with me and, and I'd be happy to write that up that would be, seems like that would be helpful. Sure. That does. I, I think that, I think a schedule like that would be a good idea. Yeah. And also be a, I mean, utilize your expertise. <laughs> typing. <laughs> <laughs> Not typing. Uh, but yeah, um, okay. my thoughts. Anything else? You want to bring a yeah, I'll make a motion to do quarterly formal walkthroughs that we sign up for with uh, Vicki or crew. I'll second that. Um, discussion? 
Yeah. Sure. Um, are we going? Are we going to abolish the monthly walkthrough? This will be amending that to make it quarterly as a formal deal with staff. Okay, so, so we won't. We're not going to have a monthly anymore. It will be quarterly only. Is that that's the right. Motion? Okay. Yeah, that's the motion. And, and but you we can, can still always send things informally in informally at any point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the, the monthlies are th were kind of thorough for what they did. They were, you know, typically about an hour and. But um, we weren't getting the follow up on them. So what was the point? We're saying now they'll be more useful if we do them less often. Report them. I'm, give I'm, the staff. I'm, I agree. The the quarterly makes sense, but I just think in three months an awful lot can go haywire with the landscape. And that can still be reported to the mm -hmm. staff. Yeah, I don't know that it would be. Um, and it can be reported to us. Yeah, yeah. You can still bring it up. It'll be yeah. on the agenda every month. So if there's something to be said outside of it, I think that's fine. Yeah, we're just abolishing kind of the formality of having to walk through monthly. If, if we're seeing the same thing. Quarter. That's the only reason that I would pose that is because I think the, I think the monthlies are valuable for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And they're not onerous. It's for each council member, each board member, it's about two or three hours a year. Mm -hmm. um, my thoughts. Any other discussion? I want to put it up to vote. Uh, everybody in favor of Lori's motion? Say aye. 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 Everybody opposed say nay. 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 All right. Um, Nicole. And Nicole's here too. Yeah. I, I did. And Nicole, are you there? You want to chime in? You're muted, Nicole. Can we hear? Yes, sir. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. Aye. Aye. Sorry about that. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I'm like running around like a chicken cut off of my head, but I, I'm here. I'm listening. I promise. But yes, aye. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> All right. So uh, five in favor, two opposed. Passes. Um, all right. Next up. Uh, discussion and possible action on current vendors that provide adult fitness classes at Rollingwood Park. I assume. That's my agenda item. You betcha. And so. I'm going to speak as a park commission member of why I put it on there, and then I'm also probably going to jump in as a citizen, but I'll distinguish those two things. Please. Um, so the reason that I put it on the agenda was because um, I believe we've had unintended consequences of our new fee structure for the $25 for adult fitness. Um, when we instituted this, we had three adult vendors, um, which is not a lot. I mean, I'd say, and generally speaking, Rollingwood Park is not overrun by adult fitness activities, um, but we're now down to one, and it's Ignite Fitness. Um, uh, I do uh, participate in Ignite Fitness. I have for 10 years, but I have no um, conflicts of interest um, technically for the city because I don't have a financial interest in it. I don't, I'm not on its board or run its business, et cetera. Um, but I did want to make sure that I put that out there. Um, I know that I was on the committee for the agreement of bumping it up to $25 an hour. My area of expertise is much more in the youth sports arena. $25 is a very reasonable amount for a field, you know, to use. Kids activities, and I believe right now the way we have it set up is any one field would have up to 25 kids on it. Most of our adult fitness programs that I've witnessed, I think it was, I'm trying to remember what the other, is it body business or what was the other, um, beat, yeah, beat fitness and life keto and ignite. Uh, I think ignite probably has the largest classes with around, the average is around 12 people per class. Um, now there's some weeks where it's less than that. Like I think last week there was more like five people and this week there's more, but anyway. Uh, Life Keto, normally when I see them, it's somewhere between five and six uh, uh, participants, and Beat Fitness was also much lower, like five or six. So when you think about what that looks like from a business perspective of you have 25 people paying for, up to 25 people paying for a spot, and you have um, 12, five, three, I can understand why the adult fitness programs would leave. The other piece that's, uh, been interesting for me to now really think about in terms of the adult fitness piece 
is that, um, for example, with Ignite, you sign up for an annual membership. So your rate structure, everything like that is set up for a whole year. So in my case, I signed up in January. The owner of the business uh, had a rate that was much lower and then basically went from 180 a year to $7,000 a year, um, which is around $600 a month. I'm, round, I'm this is sort of averaging, yeah, yeah. thinking about it. And so uh, that's, a, you know, that's a significant change. If she can't raise, like for instance, if I signed up for it for a year paying the rate that I had, she has to wait a whole year before she can adjust that rate. And I hadn't, again, I had not thought about that. In the youth, most of the youth programs that we run, and I think same thing with I-9 and some of these others, not necessarily Western Hills Little League, but um, you set your rates for a season. So you're looking at, you're, you're setting them, again, you're still setting them probably three to six months ahead, but you're setting them just for a season. And in some cases, like with the um, school day off camps um, and that kind of stuff, you literally can change your rate because it's only for a day in October or it's only for, it's not for the whole year. Now, I definitely think that the 180, I think is what we used to charge our adult vendors is way too low. I mean, there is no doubt in my mind that that is not, you know, uh, if we want to be realistic about helping fund our parks. Um, but I also don't want us, I mean, I can say for sure, I don't want one of those large ones that has a hundred people attending just in order to make more money. So I know that Ignite actually made a proposition of instead of going from 180 to 7,000, they said, can we have a transition year where we go to nine, I think she said 1900 or somewhere around there. So it's still significantly more than what she was paying uh, previously. Um, but it's not going to that full $25 an hour. A couple of other things in terms of how it impacts staff. So when I think about, again, with the youth sports, those, because they're seasonal and it's camps and it changes all the time, there's a lot of interaction that has to happen with the staff in terms of booking it. Um, you have to say, okay, it's going to be on this day. The adult fitness class basically gives a schedule for the entire year one time and then sticks with that for the whole year. In their case, they're using it at 7.30 in the morning and 8.30, I think those are the times of the two classes. They're using it when there aren't any other conflicts, like we don't have other people wanting to do birthday parties, for instance, at the pavilion during that time. We aren't having, um, it is a low time, but it's also a one time where they only have to call the staff and say, here's when we want it Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 8.30. Whereas, like I said, with the youth, they're saying, okay, we want October 12th. Okay, we want, you know, usually it's the school days off. And then, but, or I'm, we'd like to have, and then some of those sessions will make and some of them won't. And so sometimes they'll call up the staff and they'll say, oh, wait, we're canceling because we didn't get enough. Or because it rained, we're gonna have to change it. Anyway, there are a lot of more administrative things that happen when you have a variable schedule. And again, same with Western Hills Little League and, and girls softball, you know, they're, there's a seasonal schedule that they can kind of let you know when it's going to be, but it does change a lot more than this particular one. So all that saying is I did want us to just consider again, um, this is a vendor. Uh, when we talked, I know Nicole was really sen very sensitive to the vendor that we had before and making sure that it was a good experience for them. We have a vendor who's been providing a community service to our adult women for more than 12 years and almost you know, five days a week. It's a significant thing to me and to the community and to the women who it was impacting to, I understand the, 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 the money part just impacts the business person, but it really impacts these women who are coming and using this and have been using it for 12 years to completely lose it in one month because we're not being flexible in a new thing that we're implementing. So that's why I just wanted to bring it sort of to the group and sort of you know, step back. I know we have several people who want to speak about their relationship to Ignite and, and just what, what it means to them in terms of the community. Um, but the last thing that I'll say is, and, and this is part of why I was willing to serve on the Parks Commission in general. I've lived here for 24 years. I arrived with no kids. Um, I went out in the park and I played with my women's soccer group and that was really fun. 
I've had kids and I've gotten to use the playgrounds, both upper and lower. I should grow upper and lower. And then um, also done girls softball, baseball, soccer, um, some camps uh, with my so boys and girls. Um, as I've gotten older, so now I'm, so I went through my 40s and used it being a super user. Also in my 50s did uh, helped with the garden that we put in back there. Sat on the review of many a Boy Scout troop projects that we've had around. Um, and I do want to make sure because I do feel like this park, while I love children, obviously my life has been centered around them for the last 23 years, but I don't I don't know how much we really do for our adults here in the park. And when we talk about truly making transformational change in this park, we're talking about looking for donors to give money. It is not gonna come through the fees. We can all look at that um, at our budget right now and see how much money even we could maximize through that. The way that we're gonna make money if you really want to do big projects in here is going to be through fundraising. And I don't want to alienate whether it's the dog people, the adult fitness people, the, or the baseball people, or the camp people. I don't think we can afford to alienate anyone in these groups. It's going to be really important for us to really go out there and if we're going to fundraise and make some big improvements um, and help support our staff, um, we're going to have to make friends with people and make sure that each of those users also respect one another because every single one of them has a right to use the, the park and we want to use it in that way. So, uh, Thank you for that information. I am, um, I don't know that I saw the request for a transition year. Where did that come through? She sent it to, um, I think it- That was when she spoke originally, like during her speech. Well, yeah. well I knew we or talked about, hey, could there be a way to, but I never saw anything like she formal or- She sent it to Ashley and Ashley forwarded it to Send it out, okay. I think it was for like 1,900. Yeah, sorry, Nisa. Uh, yeah, I knew who you were. I just was wondering yeah. where that was and if it's not part of this. It is, I mean, the I, it is just part of the, it is, because it's discussion policy on current vendors and provide adult fitness. No, it's her, just, her tra the, your transition um, proposal. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, so I, I did It was practice. in our no. We got those previously when yeah, she came to the It was a couple time. meetings ago. That yeah. was in our packet last time. Go ahead and introduce yourself okay. for the record, and then comment. Okay, I'm Nisa Springman, the um, founder and owner of Ignite Your Life, and yeah, I, I participated in the virtual meeting in March, and I uh, presented the proposal to you all, just asking for a reduced fee and um, just showing the the significant increase that we were, you know going to have to try to figure up figure out how to come up with from going to eight, eight, $180 a year to almost $8,000 a year and to be quite honest with you it's just not possible for us and I know that's not your concern um, I, I'm the business owner but what I am passionate about is is our mission and how we are able to impact the lives of women and that's who some of these wonderful women are here today um, just to impart the importance of what we're able to do and I'm not just saying that because it's my business I'm just blessed to be able to be the founder and owner of it but I'm um, in this time this day and age where we uh, were mental health depression anxiety is 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 part of all of our lives and affects all of our family what I will say about ignite and what we're able to do and have from the onset and continue now for the past 15 years is truly impact the mental health, so not just the physical. So you may be seeing us exercising our bodies out there, but it goes far beyond that. Our whole mission is holistic, body, mind, and spirit. And so from, from keeping our bodies well to encouraging one another, to supporting one another, to in, imparting inspiration into the lives of one another, to just supporting one another in our lives as women, as moms, as uh, wives, as daughters, as entrepreneurs, as um, park commission many members. I mean, the list goes on and on and the ripple effect is vast. And so um, I know that you all are a, a committee who's looking for 
out for the best interest of this park and we love this park and I completely understand and appreciate and respect what you're doing I would just ask that you would look at the big picture with us and we are trying really hard to um, to be a blessing to this community and to legitimately impact the holistic lives of women and I'll say we're successfully doing it very much you know partly because you allow us this space out here but it's just not affordable for us to sustain long term at all um, and so that's where I would just you know pour my heart out to you asking if you would reconsider and accept the proposal and and I believe in your question it was it the proposal that I asked for was not just a transition year it was this is the proposal that I would love for you to consider moving forward but that being said I would be more than happy to uh, look at this from year to year and like let's renegotiate or look to see how we can better partner with one another is there more that we can do in the rolling wood community we we'd love to fundraise for you too you know we appreciate the heck out of this park and love it and um, feel it provides a safe clean beautiful setting for us and so um, yeah just know that we want to be partners with y'all we want to make this a great opportunity for your whole community and whatever that looks like we're more than open to having continual conversations but I look at this as a partnership um, with you all and would love to be able to continue to provide our services here with this uh, proposed rate that I did so thank you for the opportunity you bet thank it's you to be here You're welcome. anybody else want to speak Hi there, my name is Amy Yonkman. I'll just give you a quick little background of my um, connection to this community. So I've lived in the Westlake area for 20 years with my family. We've been members at Rollingwood Pool, kids have played softball. My husband is a principal at Mira Vista, Rollingwood, right across the street. So we've been very invested in this community for a lot of years. I'm also an enthusiastic supporter of Ignite, of Nisa Springman and the community of women she's inspired and served for 15 years. I offer a unique perspective because I've watched Nisa grow her business from very humble beginnings 15 years ago to the loyal community of dedicated women she serves today. Nisa has never wavered in her original mission to create a positive, inspirational, and personal outdoor experience for women. In my opinion, Nisa is as much of, Ignite is as much of a ministry as, as a business for Nisa. So I share this with you because I think it's important to note that making money has never been what drives the Ignite mission. It was, I think, if it was, Nisa would have switched gears a long time ago. Right now in Austin, Texas, the fitness industry is more competitive and fickle than ever. Add to that the challenge of operating an outdoor fitness program, weathering COVID, and pivoting while trying to maintain the business along with retaining members is a real challenge. I've witnessed women's lives transformed physically and emotionally while teaching my yoga and Pilates classes. I've taught with Ignite Yoga and Pilates for the last 13 years. I've also experienced healing, transformation, and growth in my own personal life, as well as witnessed it in the lives of other Ignite members. Rollingwood Park provides us a safe place to connect, work out, and feed our body, minds, and spirits while enjoying nature. My biggest concern for our world right now is our mental health crisis. Depression and anxiety run far too rampant throughout our community and our society. My unwavering hope through COVID has been that we emerge as a society realizing the need to focus more attention and funding while destigmatizing mental wellness. So knowing this, I ask you, how can we as a community not support and prioritize a business like Ignite and help it continue to thrive? We're all about encouraging our children to play on the playground. Is it not equally important for adult women to enjoy connection and playtime while strengthening physical and mental health? We have been some of the most appreciative, conscientious users of Rollingwood Park for nearly 13 years. We are an asset to this community and we deserve affordable access to the park. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley, are we limited to three minutes on these, or um, how does it? I guess as long as it's consistent, that's generally for public comments uh, that are, are not on the agenda, so however okay. you want to run it is fine. But I think probably it's safe to put a limit on it, honestly. Yeah. Just I would encourage that three minutes. Yeah. yeah.
got yeah. three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Martha Lynn Mangum. Um, I actually wrote something, but Nisa and Amy basically said everything that were in, in, my, in my speech. But I, um, I raised my children in Westlake for the past 26 years. My kids were ones that played Western Hills softball, baseball. We've used the pool. We've used the park. Um, I have been a member of Ignite for 10 years. I've known Nisa for 23. And speaking as, uh, for her as a business owner, she's the most respectful, um, loving human being with great integrity. Um, I am also her business coach, and we've had lots of discussions about how to coordinate, how to work through this, and how to really partner with the city of Rolling Wood through this. Um, but I wanted to share with you a story that happened this morning that really speaks to what Ignite is. We were working out. I'm still in my workout clothes. I apologize. <laughs> um, and there was a new member of Ignite that I'd never met before. And before we even started, we made sure she knew every person's name. I was running with her and I asked her, how did you find Ignite? And she said, I come to the park and walk my dog. I love this park, it's beautiful, it's shady, people are friendly, and I just happened to be walking by and one of the members reached out to me and started talking to me and started telling me about the fitness group. And before I knew it, I went immediately home, got online, signed up, and here I am. Mm -hmm. She was happy. She was working out. She was thro so thrilled to be a part of our community. And the only way she really found us was through this park. So that speaks volumes to what the park offers our fitness group. And we just hope and pray that we can work this out so that we can continue to work out at Rollingwood. Thank you. Thanks. I would like to speak. I'm Mary Elizabeth Kofer, and I am on the Park Commission. And I think as much as we focus on children, as we should, we have a lot of children in this community, I don't think that we can have health, healthy children unless we focus on healthy adults. My background is in physical therapy. I cannot tell you how many people I have worked with with diabetes that I tell them it's so simple to get out and just walk. We not only have the opportunity for them to walk on these trails, but we have the fitness equipment there. If there are also these classes, and I don't mean just Ignite, I mean all of them. I think we need to make it affordable for all of these groups, even the smaller groups, to bring people out, to bring adults out to work out. I don't think that we can balance our budget on the backs of these fitness classes. So whatever it takes, I don't care if we have to compensate them for coming. I think we need to get these adults out there exercising. And I thank you guys for coming on a regular basis. Hi, my name is Kelly Sampley. And um, there is a lot that has already been said that I plan to say, but I did. Just, you know, this is important to me, so um, I want to just say that I am also one of those um, Eanes residents, uh, residents that was walking my dogs in the park. I was coming off of a neck injury, wasn't really doing anything super physical. You know, kept coming by these women working out. I knew a couple of the ladies working out, and they said, come and try some classes and see, you know, see how it works. And the benefit to the numbers that we were talking about earlier in having small classes is something that I, as I'm aging, I need a instructor that is looking at me and telling me, you're doing this correctly, you're not doing this correctly, or hey, this hurts, how do I modify this? Because you know, our goals is to be physically fit and not injured, right? Um, so I don't want a large class where nobody's looking after me and understanding you know, what I'm you know, physically going through. Um, as to the location of Rollingwood Park, not only was I able to become a member of Ignite because I was there, I was using it, um, you know, from this sort of mental health, you know, perspective, um, for me going there daily, it's, it brings back all my memories. I mean, I've held my kids' birthday parties there. I have had my daughter played softball. I ran concessions for several years. That time is, you know, behind me. I get to look at the bocce ball 
pit that my son with Troop 31 recently constructed this year, and I look at it daily, and I'm like, oh, you know, and he talks about maybe I'll do an Eagle Scout project there. So there's a connection there that I, um, I get to see. I love listening to the birds in the morning. I love just sort of waking up, you know, with the day, with everybody else. And it's a time where I put the screen down. I don't have to put on AirPods to work out and listen to some podcast or more noise. I get to listen to these ladies. Um, they give us inspirational you know, um, uh, sayings and things to things that we need to think about for the w for the week. They ask us, you know, what are you working on? What are your goals for this summer? It is really about how some of these things that we try to impart on our children. It's a way to impart those things on ourselves too, because we're all moms um, in this group. And another part of that is these women, particularly some of the ones who have had who have older kids. Pretty much every single day they're telling me, because I come and I'm like, oh, we had this situation this morning with my teenagers. And they're like, you're gonna get through this. This is how you do it. You know, there's just this whole self being, um, or whole self growth that occurs in being a part of this group. And I'm able to participate in it because of its location. I'm able to drop off my kids at school and get to a workout class that's at a reasonable time that allows me to get out and get on with the rest of my day. And because of that, over the last three years, I've lost 20 pounds. I have found flexibility and strength that I haven't had in my youth. And that is a whole other aspect in my life that I need. Um, and I don't want to lose it. I don't want to go to another park. Um, I don't, you know, Rollingwood Park is safe and clean. And if there's anything that we can do, if it's fundraising, if it's Ignite Park cleanup days, if it's getting our kids out there to take care of the parks. I do it in other parks. I've never been asked for Rollingwood Park, and I'd be happy to do it as well. So I hope that um, this discussion can continue to happen to make a reasonable yeah. and uh, park usage fee occur for this group and maybe other adult fitness groups as well. I'm sad to hear you know, some of the other guys have left because of this proposal. I don't think that that's the highest and best use for public parks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Simone Krizan, and I am here on behalf of NISA and Ignite today. Um, I've, been a, I've been a part of the Eanes School District community for over 20 years. I have raised three, I'm raising still three children here. Um, in our community and I'm here on behalf to really have um, in hopes that you guys will reconsider uh, this it's really an outrageous price increase and it's not sustainable and um, it doesn't seem reasonable so that's what we're hoping that you'll reconsider that um, in addition to the fitness aspect that you guys have heard that um, Ignite offers and again you know the positive mental effects that it can have on all of us we love um, exercising outdoor that has been one of the main strengths too with ignite but in addition to that literally here in the park the relationships that have been forged the community that occurs um, business opportunities have literally happened in the park and that in turn helps us all um, it helps the community and I would hope you can consider that and the other thing I wanted to point out is um, especially in this time, it seems like our local Westlake area and the Rollingwood area, um, we're losing so many small businesses, um, even on our Bee Caves Road, cherished businesses, and because they cannot sustain these higher rate increases. And we're just hoping that you would consider that so that we don't lose this precious and valuable Ignite here in our local community. So thank you very much. Uh, Melissa citizen Morrow, Melissa. Citizen Melissa. Um, so I literally met Ignite because I had I had a bum knee. I just had knee surgery, and I was walking through the park. And I'll never forget Kathleen, the woman who was uh, leading the fitness. She was like, "Hey, you, you should come to our classes. I can help rehab your knee." And I was like, "Really? Okay." So and here I am. I can do. I can play soccer again um, since I've been doing it. But what I wanted to say is they have been. Their, their teachers in particular have been so community inclusive. They're really good at reaching out 
And it really has been, um, for me, it is, and obviously, I mean, it is super convenient. Here's the thing. <laughs> if you're a mom of three kids and you have a full-time job, getting exercise in is not an easy thing to have happen. And so, yes, if this moves, I will probably drive to wherever it is. But it makes it really challenging. I'll probably have to only do it one or two times a week, whereas now I can actually come down here almost four times a week because I, it's one minute for me to get over here. Even if I have to just drive over to Zilker Park, it's going to be going over there, find a parking place, pay for the parking over there. And again, I will pay. I mean, I'm game for upping the fees. I totally get that, and I will pay whatever it takes. But I also realize NISA has to appeal to a broader, a broader group, and not everyone, because if the competitive market there will be able to pay that. The last thing that I'll say is one of the things that's really come to light for me is when I moved here, and this is not going to be a surprise to anyone else, um, I was a teacher in the public school system and my house cost $250,000. The people who are moving here now are buying two, three, to five million dollar houses, put a fitness studio inside of their own homes and they have a private trainer who comes to their house and does this. This is really, I mean, I'm trying to like, this is your middle class group who we can't have a trainer. I don't have an in-house gym. This is our group where we come together as a group. And I really do think it builds community and it, it's a way of you getting adults, like you said, back out into our park. I think it is so important that our kids see us doing activity out there and that we carve out that time. So I hope that we find a nice middle ground, you know, and a compromise where it's contributing to the park, but also that it's sustainable for those businesses. Because I'd hate, I know our intention was not to drive off all the businesses. I know that wasn't what it was. So looking for what is the model, I'm not sure what it is, and that's what I sort of leave up to the discussion part of this. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Um, when you guys, the, the small committee that came up with this fee schedule, y'all got back together after Nisa spoke to us in March. What happened, what was the consensus when y'all regrouped? I'll let Don speak to that and Nicole. We had no consensus. We, <coughs> we looked at, I mean, we had a rate set by the city council and the statute about that. And we looked at Nisa's situation and there was no common ground. I mean, we couldn't, at that meeting, we couldn't, um, We didn't really feel like we could make changes um, one way or another. We weren't, without question, we felt like it, it, it was not good for you, believe me. Um, however, we can change rate structures. That's what the city council can do. And um, I remember writing up a, just a summary that I distributed to um, people with meeting and it was to me it was like uh, where do we go from here we we disagree um, and um, the, the issue did not go away though um, one of the things that Melissa and I met uh, maybe a month ago or so and chewed this thing up uh, youth sports do their their larger they bring parents and grandparents and siblings there it's a it's a big deal a much bigger deal than a um, an exercise group as many of you have pointed out um, I was actually hoping that you and I could get together and <coughs> come up with a proposal for that but I mean so busy I just kind of didn't contact you but um, so is, is the direction that is the question here today that we have a different fee schedule for children than adults is that no what I'm I, I think I think it's um, sometimes you get into trying to use the, the broad paintbrush for everybody and in this case it simply 
is costing us some legacy users of our park. Absolutely. And that, was, that was not our intention. And that right. was well stated. And um, how exactly how we restructure that, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I think uh, I think we could probably hammer out something and bring it to the park commission next time we meet. Um, would you be willing to? Oh yeah, for okay. sure. Um, in a way. Uh, Melissa and I also talked about, <clears throat> and I've we've talked about this with uh, Nicole also when we were initially working on this, is um, it's, it's not likely we're going to be able to gracefully fund the park uh, maintenance and operations with renting out spaces for activities. They just don't bring in enough money to handle all that, and if we actually were doing that, we'd be aggravating neighbors, mm -hmm. Alex, <laughs> for example. Um, so really, I think what it gets down to is, as Melissa said, starting off, um, $25 an hour for the field use when it's a bunch of kids, and um, that's more or less in line with how these fields are used in the in the in the area that Austin has got. Austin's got a fairly complicated fee schedule. Well, we're not Austin. <laughs> Understood. We're not Eanes ISD either. We're Rollingwood. Um, but I, I do feel, that particularly from hearing you all talk about, it, I think we need to re rethink these. Maybe we say you know um, up to this many people and and. And really, we have to address that adult exercise classes don't bring, um, uh, they don't bring crowds of people with um, parents and siblings and aunts and uncles and they're, they're quite different. They're quiet and they're, what I've heard, they're, they're quite respectful of our space. And I doubt that they have the wear and tear on the fields that right, the they're other. On, they're on hard surfaces mostly. So maybe um, maybe we. And, and I would just speak to, so the, in my mind, the precedent is Western Hills League is a great example. It's, it's a unique user. You know, they've been along, around for a long time. And so they actually negotiate something that's totally separate from the $25 an hour. And I think our intention was to get something that at least using that as sort of a basis was, okay, so what do we think that they're about paying and that seems about fair. And, um, but we didn't have, we don't have, we didn't have an existing different contract other than this 180, which is what was sort of based off of the city of Austin. If I'm remembering this correctly, it was at least 10 years ago, that the 180 that city of Austin, yeah, city of Austin make, basically makes you do like 150 for a year and then you pay 45 cents a person or something like that for each class. So then they had to start keeping a tally. So that's how they do it. The suggested rate that she suggested was actually using that city of Austin model, which is uh, the 150 plus 45 cents per person per time they come. Um, but she, she made it more than, I can't remember how much more, but like 20% more than what she would pay in Austin. Well, I guess what I'm asking is, is the direction, and I, I asked this before, and I don't know if y'all yeah. are ready to answer it, but it sounds like what we're doing is we would have something for kids' sports and a different model for adults. I think it depends, because I think... It's Not something specific for Ignite and everybody else. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, That's and I, don't, I don't think we should do something specific for Ignite. I'd rather see the adult <laughs> something, but I also... I could see, like, if we started doing men's three-on-three -three soccer up there or something like that, you know, I'm not sure, again, when you have an audience, like, that comes to the games and all that stuff, it's not just the players, um, it's, you have a bigger group, so for parking and everything else, it does become something different, so I don't know, I mean, but I think the problem that we have is we have someone who's been here for 12, 13 years, she can't wait till we figure this out because right, she's right. already had to start playing right. that and so part of me when we couldn't get when our small committee of three couldn't even get on the same page 
that's why I put it on here as like, hey, we're about to lose our last adult beverage vendor. That was not the intention of this. Right. So we obviously need to talk about it. I'm just not sure, you know, I mean, I'm happy to sit down with uh, Nicole and Don again and just say, hey, you know, uh, you know, what, what, what would we call it? I, I'm not sure I think adult and kid is the right thing. I don't know. My, nope. my thought yeah, yeah, yeah. there is I don't think it's fair to say, well, if you bring a crowd, we're going to charge you more. So I don't know what the right answer is, and maybe this is something where Alex gets involved. If y'all are having trouble with yeah. your small group, Alex yeah. is our park liaison who sits on sure. city council, and maybe that is a good yeah. um, addition to the group to kind of brainstorm and see what makes sense and what seems fair to everybody. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to be a part of that. Yeah, Alec Robinson, I'm 4818 Rollingwood Drive. Um, thank you guys for all being here. And I enjoyed you know, listening to everybody's uh, comments. And I just wanted to get up here and I was just, you know, just brainstorming in my head how we do that. I was one of the ones, I'll admit, I voted for, for, for the rate schedule, mm -hmm. just so you know. But I don't want to see, uh, I, I would like to, for these adult programs to continue to exist, the opportunity to continue to exist in our so, I mean, one of the things I was thinking is, well, you could have, um, maybe we just say, hey, these morning adult fitness programs, we're gonna have like three or four of them that we're gonna approve and we're gonna do them on a mm -hmm. yearly basis and we're gonna have like, this is the, 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 the amount that we set and then it's set. Because I think, Nicole, I mean, uh, your, your point, uh, Melissa's point earlier about, well, you know, there is, well, I think this may have been before uh, the meeting, you, I heard uh, some comments about, well, there's, the administrative overhead is yeah. different for, yeah. for these. I mean, it's like you set it once and it's good for a year. So maybe maybe, maybe that's an option. Um, and then you still leave the fields, like if you want to rent it for a thing at the rate that we set or the, the uh, pavilion for parties and not mm -hmm. that maybe none of that changes. Maybe we just have these adult fitness programs that we have a, like a separate one year contracts or something mm -hmm. like that. I don't know what the overhead of doing that though. <laughs> if we can do that or not, but that's just one idea I had. Um, and I do think one of the things I do think is like the pay per the pay per user. I do. It, it sort of like does sort of make sense to me that if you have fewer people, then it, it, the cost per person. Like I wonder, like with these, um, with with some of the uh, the uh, camps that we have out there, like how many kids does it take for them? To be able to like justify the twenty five dollars an hour, and then you can just do the math and figure out okay, mm -hmm. well, it's about this much yeah. per person is what it should be. And then if you're going to look at some of these other fitness things, and they have ten, then it's. I mean, we could come to the number, I think. So mm -hmm. anyway, it's just some thoughts, mm -hmm. but I'd be happy to be involved in it. Great. So can we commit to coming back sure. by the next meeting with a yeah. proposal that we can we'll, work on? And we'll I don't know we'll what come up with a proposal. With Ignite in the meantime, yeah. but. I think that sounds great. I'd hate to lose Ignite. So yeah. um, if y'all could come back with a proposal and meet and kind of put some thought to it and what's fair for all parties involved. That um, sounds great. And I would like to say that I'd like to get back some of the fitness groups that left. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to us to be considering not just Ignite, although you yeah. guys are very valuable. Yeah. I would like to get these other fitness groups back as well. Well, and I was going to say that Life Keto class was almost like all 60 and over, which again, it just hits a really nice demographic. It's different than the other age group. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think once we have our new proposal and it's agreed upon and all of that, then we reach out to the other groups and mm -hmm. say, yeah. would you be willing to come back yes. at this new rate? We yes. have, you know, determined that, you know. That's, that's perfect, Lori. I like that. Yeah. And we yeah, reach out to them in a good faith effort. Yeah, go. Right. Um, Do you have a fitness idea? No. <laughs> <laughs> Men's uh, softball. All I was, yeah, all yeah. I was going to say is, is I, first and foremost, I think the whole point of doing that and doing one rate was to try to make it as easy as possible. Easy. Yeah. Because everybody here is and a volunteer, yeah. and we have a very small city staff. Yeah. I, I know I sat in on commission, uh, the little committee meetings with Don and sometimes and Nicole. Um, so they were really trying to make it easy, one fee for everyone, and they knew it was going to be tough, right? So um, 
I think at least from being a major stakeholder uh, through softball, um, we had always wanted something to be charged because when we were paying for everything before the city took it over, we were like, why do we have to pay for every expense in the park or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, that fee probably shouldn't be the same. It was just gonna be, okay, What? how do you mm -hmm. make a how difference of who pays yeah. what? Um, I feel like, at least from the groups I see up there, most of them are right under the pavilion or mm -hmm. outside the fields. Mm -hmm. um, so they probably should be being charged less. I think I've been up there at times where they are using the field in the outfield area at times. Mm -hmm. I think if they're potentially taking a whole field, I know if they're only using a space, but if people can't be using it while they're out there, you know, they might have to be held to that mm -hmm. fee. But if they're only using a smaller area, I feel like a separate contract or something could be arranged or whatever. Yeah. That would make more sense. Um, I agree. And I, I, and I guess I get scared if, if we do rent at a cheaper rate and for those fields during the school year, not a problem at all because mm -hmm. kids aren't out there. But during the summer, we are getting more camps and mm -hmm. things going on with I-9 and stuff, and we don't want to have that space right. rented out for the whole year, I guess. Yeah. The, the space you refer to is the pavilion? Or the the fields. The fields. No, the fields. Well, that fields. I, I, I don't see it much, but I have seen groups at times be out in field two in the outfield or whatever doing fitness groups. Or well, maybe it makes sense for whatever proposal they come up with to then bring you into the discussion to review it before it's brought to, down, to the commission. I'm fine with that. I just don't want to, I know we're getting more camps during the summer, mm -hmm. so yeah. we sign these year-long contracts. Yeah. I don't want to at a cheaper rate, we don't want to yeah. be right. giving up that money or right. whatever. I but I can most of the people least, are using areas yeah. that are outside the fields, and that should be at cheaper rates in my mind. And Ignite, uh, just because I know the workouts, um, it's usually they, she'll just have you go do run a couple of runs, but most of it is on the flat top. It's not, they don't usually do a whole class in the field. It's just like, go run to first base, come back, you know, and then do your other oh, stuff. That, yeah, I've seen some out yeah. there use it. I yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So when you all were talking about bringing other adult fitness vendors back to the park, <clears throat> I remember I'll vividly recall this back in the fall. I was driving up to Rolling Wood and going to attend one of our 830 classes, and the park was popping. There was our classes and there was beat fitness up there, Jennifer Wooten who was teaching the ladies. And I just remember thinking like, wow, this park is alive and what a great vision of health and um, vitality that was. And, and so when you all were talking about bringing back other vendors, I do wanna speak on behalf of beat fitness. She's an excellent person um, I know lives in Rolling Woods my understanding I've visited with her several times and I just want to speak on her behalf to say she's running a great fun business because we do have one dance class that we hold at Elisa's but every woman needs to dance and she teaches these fun dance classes and so I do want to speak on her behalf because I know if she were here she'd be really happy to know that that is a consideration and then back to that $25 fee I know one of the things that's come up for us as you all are consideration of how to move to take next steps you know once that $25 fee was placed on us all of a sudden the expectation went up for us well okay so does that mean we walk into a class setting and the trash cans are completely um, they're they're emptied do we walk into what happens if we walk into a dirty pavilion and that's happened and so then we end up cleaning it up but if at a rate of $25 per class, just as if we're at Elisa's or Champions, there's an expectation that we're gonna walk into a clean facility, right? And there's not gonna be leftover trash from the night before or the thing before. So when the fees go up to that expense, so does the expectation of then what we look to expect from the park too. And I don't think, I'm speaking, y'all, I'm speaking on behalf of Vicki, right? And it sounds like her plate is already full and so to then turn around and ask her to make sure she's up here or someone that works under her to make sure the trash is 
not overflowing at 7.15 in the morning to, so we can start our class at 7.30 and the confetti is picked up off of the pavilion. Like those are just things that come up with a higher rate that I would assume is probably an unintended, like no one ever thought that maybe that was something that would come out of it, but that's something that has come out of it for us. Is that and then then do we report that to someone? How do we go about finding a solution to that? So thanks for your time. Legit points. All right. Anything else on that one? All right. So we're going to meet and propose something next month. Uh, the last agenda item was number six: discussion and possible action regarding park expansion to the north of the swim facility. Um, I know Don and I met, uh, we walked around, we think it's definitely possible. Uh, we're going to hunt out some bids um, yeah. from a, maybe like a, somebody to come in and just clean it up. Um, what is yeah, we were, we were talking about getting like a, <coughs> somebody with a rubber tire backhoe, mm -hmm. not a bulldozer track machine, but something just to drive down there. And uh, we need somebody to specify it to what we're doing, but there's a lot of trash trees. There's a lot of yeah. So the thought was just to um, clean up some of the trash trees and the undergrowth, and and bring that to the parks commission uh, at some point in the future, and see if it was something we wanted to pursue. It's mm -hmm. a really it's it's shady. Mm -hmm. uh, it would probably take to get down there. When we're looking at initially, I think, well, here's a stairway, but it's going to be more like a switchback, yeah. like it takes to get down to the the lower part mm -hmm. uh, by the pavilion down there. Um, I've called, <clears throat> I've talked to, I've, I've talked to one group that said we don't do anything but retaining walls. That was Fred Tillman and company, and I called two other landscapers, and uh, nobody has returned any calls. But I've been just so busy this last several weeks but I'm gonna be I'll be finding somebody but I also had a question um, when we work with somebody like that do we need somebody who's bonded and insured mm -hmm. and yes all the just the most <laughs> serious okay because that's a, that's yeah, a consideration that insured, I need yeah. to keep in mind are you bonded are you insured unless it's, <laughs> unless it's a Boy Scout group and we have in the past, we had an Eagle Scout project at Wea that was really similar to like this kind of overgrowth. They came in, now of course, Boy Scouts covers their insurance. So if they had sawed off one of their feet, it would have been on them. But, um, and it didn't look quite as good. We definitely had ABC follow up with a, yeah. let's clean those cuts up a little bit. But a, we've also had ABC come in and we had a lot of success you want to drive down exposition recently we started with a boy scout troop did a little say, bit of it way it looks and now and you can really get abc to just bid you like let's do 25 feet and see what it looks like yeah. and they'll come and just do a section now i will that say abc perfect. is really struggling to get staff right now so it may take us a little bit longer but the perfect time to do that is ABC is super busy right now because everybody's lawns you might remember you're now having to mow your lawn every 10 days instead mm -hmm. of but in the winter, uh, when everything sort of died back and they don't have as much work, that mm -hmm. is a great time to do those projects. I'm okay. just going to go yeah. on record again <laughs> saying that I am not in favor of adding more park when we can't take care of what we currently have. I, I agree I, with I, that. I, I, I agree with that too, but I think um, can't agree and then for one thing, you for, well, <laughs> for one thing, it's, well, it's, a, it's kind of a long range project. It's yeah. I think all Chad and I were looking at is let's let's see what it would what it would cost to get this done. Yeah. Well, what and do you consider the use of this space? Um, it's a shady place. It's part of the park. Um, and, and the use? Just a spot where people can go and read it's a book. A, it's a park if you're that, 15. That would be an awesome place to go hang out. <laughs> are, are you, are you I'm not sure you want to invite that. <laughs> I have teenagers. They're, they're down so there anyway. I would not say, yeah. hey, here's a secluded spot this, for you. This would be something that would attract more adults. Yeah, this is. Like, and I think the. This the is cleaning this up from people that are already using it. And, and, and are anyway. you considering yeah. access to this? I mean, consider the, the difficulties we had when we tried to figure out how to make it ADA compliant. 
Okay. Over here to the on the corner of. I don't think we can make it ADA compliant. Exactly. I just wanted to make sure that you weren't trying. No. To, that no. you can't. I don't know what the legalities yeah. are about that, but. We just yeah. wanted to to get a bid to see what it would cost to clean it up and make it more usable and make it a spot where if we have uh, games going on or activities going on or somebody has uh, just wants to be a little bit away and and can go over there and read a book or uh, sit on a park bench or maybe they want to be in the shade or uh, and if we cleaned it up and made it usable um, I, I can understand that uh, and as far as getting it cleaned up this might be a, something that could be done during an it's my park day mm -hmm. there's one in the fall mm -hmm. Uh, instead of just spreading mulch, maybe we could get people down there to clean up, not removing the trash trees. Plus, I'm also interested in knowing what you consider trash trees. <laughs> uh, I have opinions on that. Oh, I know you do. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, that might be a good uh, project for It's My Park Day. Yeah, yeah. Love there's it. some really nice, or there's some nice live oaks down there. And, I mean, it's... There it's really kind of are. Nice there really are. And I've got all kinds of ideas to put people to work for It's My Park Day that don't involve me there yet. Good. Let's, let's hear, <laughs> then why don't you make a list of those and let's bring that yeah, up before. Yeah, bring it up as an agenda item. Yes, I'd like to see that. I'll just pull up my last park walkthrough list and photos. Okay, and I'm up there, by the way, working on the park uh, during the week sometimes, so if y'all ever want to join me, right now I'm working on that circular bed. If anybody wants to come pull weeds with me. Oh, weeds. Circular. <laughs> Circular. 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 Circular.